Hello denizens of the internet, this is Kira Una coming to you today. Today's project, we are needle felting something. Please follow along in the video with each step. I just wanted to advise that I was, at the time of filming this project, trying to keep it a secret as it was a gift for a friend. But it has been a whole year since I have filmed this and in September 2023, I am just getting to it now. With that said, this video is Halloween themed and we will be doing a needle felting plague doctor because, you know, 21st century plagues and such. Also, please be careful as needle felting, although it is fun, it can be dangerous to your fingers because the needles are barbed and sharp. So please take the needed precautions to keep yourself safe while doing needle felting crafts. And now onto the tutorial. Step one, we'll start with some sheep's wool. What kind of sheep is this from? I got no idea. However, all I know is that it is fairly coarse. It is the right colors that I need and it's what we'll be working with today. Step two, grab a few wool felting needles and a safe surface to stab into. Just be careful that you don't stab your fingers. Now, you can use this type of set of needle felting needles and a brush pad to stab into, or you can use single needles and a block of foam. This rake thingy that I'm holding here is also handy to hold your project still so you don't hurt yourself because those needles are sharp. We're going to pull some wool out of the bags and we're going to start making the base for our plague doctor. The best way I can describe this step is just keep stabbing the wool and keep stabbing the wool to get the wool nice and dense. Keep stabbing until you start seeing the shape that you want. This does take some time and I'm going to be showing this to you as a time lapse on how to make your shape. So just be sure to keep moving it around to shape it as you go and just be sure not to stab your finger in the process. If you stab a lot in one place, it will start compacting even more than the rest of the body. You will want to make a line that is more compact to act sort of as a neck. If you do this correctly, your shape will start sort of looking like a bit of like a gray bean. Now you can do a little bit more condensing around where you would like the head to be. The head should be no bigger than a third of your bean since we'll, we will be adding some body parts after. This next part can be tricky as you start to build up the details of the body. You will want to take some of your base wool and start needling it into sort of a cone beak shape on your bean base where you want the face of your plague doctor to be. Just again, be careful not to poke your finger. We'll take some more of the base wool and start rolling it in our hands to sort of pre-felt our arm shape. You can, if you have spare wool yarn, 
take a length of it and either do a braid or a chain crochet stitch to make it a little wider of a base before wrapping your fiber around it for a bit of stabilization or to use as a basic core. This will make it a little easier to get the arms into that kind of tube shape. Then keep stabbing until the arms are dense enough to your liking for attaching it at the shoulders on the base. Next we're going to give them some feet. We're going to take some dark brown wool and shape it into sort of like a teardrop that flattens out to essentially form the shoes. That will give you a chance to attach it to the very bottom. And I do apologize in advance for any off camera shots as I didn't have the best recording rig at the time. Once the feet are attached, we'll use some wear brown in a thin-ish layer and cover the entire bottom of the body, essentially sandwiching the feet in that layer so they're nice and secure. And it also sort of gives them some pants. Now, again, I am sorry that you can't really see this step very well. Next, we have the rope. We're going to take black wool and spread it out into a sheet on the block. And we're going to felt it into fabric and sort of treat it as such. You're going to essentially drape it over the shoulders of your plague doctor base that is really starting to take shape. Cut little holes for the arms and slide it over the body, well, kind of like a robe. This is a little bit like sewing in its own way. Once you have it draped in a way that you're happy with, you can needle it onto the body to tack it down and to shape it more to conform to the body. We're doing some gloves by adding some of the lighter medium brown and needling those onto the hands. Just be careful that you don't needle it too much into the sleeve of the robe as we want to give the simulation of them wearing multiple layers. Here's where you can play around a little bit. You can either use a cording, you could use some yarn or just some fiber like what I have here with the purple to make the belt. I'm just stabbing it in to form the waist. Now, if you're using yarn, you can tie it as tight as you like and then stab around the waist or the belt itself to give it a little bit of shaping. Alternatively, you can use a needle groove. So essentially you needle a groove into the robe to seat the belt and then use a few tacking stabs or possibly even sew it down into place if you really wanna go detailed with thread acting as belt loops. Now we're going to get started in on the mask, which has multiple steps. The first things first, you'll want to use white or whatever color the mask is going to be of your choice and lay down a base layer over that sort of beak that we gave them earlier. You don't want to cover the whole head as this is a mask and not a full head covering. At the back of the head, once the face is covered in the white, I'm adding a little bit of gray to the back of the head to not only give a bit more fullness, but also needling and condensing and compacting a line around the very edge of the mask to, again, to give it a simulation of layers if there isn't enough definition. You can always add a little bit more fiber in spots that you feel needs a little bit more fullness or more opacity. I'll be adding some of that mid-toned brown to simulate the strap at the back of the head for the mask. I will add a few layers and some under stabbing to essentially give it the simulation that it's a thick leather strap to hold the mask onto the head. Next we have the lenses for the mask. You'll want to make two near identical sized balls of wool and attach them to the mask. I'm going to be using purple for the lenses for this plague doctor. Now for the tricky bit. The ridge around the lenses can be difficult to add as it needs very precise tacking. I've taken a bit of the white and tacked down a corner along the ridge. 
and then I used my finger to twist it into a cord as if it was similar to spinning wool. And then I needled it into place slowly as I go around the lens. Now, if you want to, if you have difficulties with this step, you can skip it if you need to. Also along the ridge of the nose of the mask to simulate stitches from the lens to the tip of the beak, you can simply condense and compact a line to make an indent that you can see in the video that I had done earlier. And now the hat. We're going to make a tube of black wool, similar to how we did the arms, but wider. And the only thing I can just say is just keep stabbing the tube into shape. You can, if you really struggle with the shaping, is to make the tube as wide as you want the hat base. And then you can always cut the wool as flat and as tall as you want it. You can always add more on if you feel that you've cut it too short. Then, the same way we did with the robe, we're going to make a flat brim piece by essentially just felting a black flat kind of donut. And then attaching the brim to the hat base to make a complete hat form. With the hat complete, I wanted to work on finding a way to make the lantern. I tried to think of ways to felt this glow-in-the-dark burnout yarn into shape to make the lantern out of it, or to use it as an accent somewhere on the mask. But acrylic and polyester synthetic fibers don't needle felt or, well, just they don't felt in general. So instead, I found some of my jewelry making stash, got my pliers and one of those jewelry head pins, two caps, and a glow-in-the-dark pony bead. I assembled the lantern onto the head pin using my pliers to make a loop for the plague doctor to hold on to, and I sewed it into place using a brown thread. The wool will fuzz over top of my stitching, so it will be hidden quite well. Now you can if you need to, just use a little smidge of wool over top of your sewing to make it invisible. Just be sure that when you're needling it into place that you don't needle onto the metal parts of your lantern so you don't break your needle. Lastly, I needed to find a way to attach the hat to the head. I used some embroidery thread to make a tie for the hat to go under the neck, but I also added a hook and eye clip to the hat and the head to really keep it secure, so it was a lot harder to lose the hat. For the hooks and eyes, for some reason, I didn't record the footage of me putting it on, but it is there just as a point of reference. And now, the Plague Doctor is finished. Thank you once again for following along with me on this crafting adventure. Please like, subscribe, and comment to help with that whole YouTube algorithm thing. Also, please note that I am the sole creator, actor, writer, and editor for this video. Supplies cost money, and it takes a lot of time to make these videos for you to enjoy. If you have the means to do so, or if you would like to support this channel, please visit my Ko-Fi page, by using the QR code here on the screen or click on the link in the description box below. Your donation would really help out this channel. Until next time, I hope you all have a spooktacular Halloween. <laughs>